I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, your friendly neighborhood 1980s G.I. Joe toy reviewer. And today I'll be taking a look at the G.I. Joe Battlefield accessory, the 1987 Coastal Defender. Now this Coastal Defender doesn't make any comic book or cartoon appearances. However, among G.I. Joe collectors, it's actually kind of a controversial toy. Kind of surprising, because this is what it is. It's just a small green trailer. I wondered what all the fuss was about until I took a closer look. Well, it still looks like a pretty ordinary covered trailer at this point. This is what a three and three quarter inch figure looks like against it. It's, um, well, it's actually fairly a good size. I wouldn't say it's too large or too small. According to the instructions, we do have a type of a battle mode here. So you can open up one of the walls, pull out two of the missiles, and you don't necessarily have to store the missiles inside, it's just more convenient that way. Place the missiles on this little bracket. You do have to push them down a little firmly here, because they're very easy, they tend to pop off rather easily. Swing it around, and you can Position the bracket with the missiles on it any which way you want. And you can do the same thing for the other side. And now you have an armed trailer. In fact, this um, configuration actually looks really good hooked up. For the 1986 Havoc. And now you have a nice long um, military train here. You also notice one of the unfortunate problems to this uh, setup here. Most trailed vehicles in the G.I. Joe line are actually only two wheeled. However, this is four. Now as you can see the, um, the hook doesn't necessarily uh, line up or, or level up I should say with some vehicles and it winds up actually um, pulling up the uh, vehicle and the front wheels are just uh, dangling there. That's not the case for all vehicles and some vehicles it's not really as noticeable as others. This is just rather unfortunate because I think it looks really good in this way. And now to transform the Coastal Defender into its attack base mode and if you haven't already uh, sw swung these missiles out, you don't necessarily have to do them right now. But you just fold down the walls like that. Obviously you'll want to swing the missiles back upwards. At the very back there's this uh, almost door-like piece held on by clips. Just flip that down. Go to the front. Pull this thing up. Now, obviously you can take the seat out. Again, you don't necessarily have to leave that in there. Again, it's just a convenience thing just putting it in there because it fits. And this whole section just accordions out backwards and fits down on top of there. Now you can just turn this whole thing around and the radar dish you can just spin that forwards or 360 degrees if you so choose. And what used to be the clips for this little ramp can now hold the command seat. And you just slide that in and there you have it. Now you can put a figure in there And it's transformed into a rather nicely sized little missile base. Or if you uh, take the radar dash into consideration, it's a communications base or just a radar station. 
Now I'm going to take a look and see what G.I. Joe collectors had a problem with. When I said the Coastal Defender was not too big or too small, that is, you know, compared to an 1 to 18 scale figure, which is the G.I. Joe scale. And of course, it doesn't look too bad hooked up to a G.I. Joe scale vehicle. However, there is something very strange about the sculpt of this vehicle, which leads me to believe that the scale is actually wrong. Take a look at these things sculpted on the back here. Those are gas cans. This is what a G.I. Joe scale gas can should be. This is 1 to 18 scale. This seems to be maybe 1 to 32 scale. Something like you would find in a die cast car or something a transformer or at least the G1 transformers were actually a bit scaled to 1 to 32 to 1 to 24 scale. Another thing that G.I. Joe collectors have pointed out, which is really odd, is the existence of this vehicle at all. It's, it's supposed to be very innocuous until it just transforms into a weapons platform, which is really cool and actually well executed in this toy. But why is it a G.I. Joe toy? That seems very deceptive. It seems more along the lines of something a Cobra, or even Zartan, ought to be using, rather than G.I. Joe. It just doesn't fit with that sort of uh, honorable warrior status that the soldiers of G.I. Joe have. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.